Hello everyone, today I'm going to recap one of the action thriller films released in the year 2016 called The Last Heist. Watch out and take care. The plot of the film opens with a group of robbers preparing to rob a bank that is about to close because one of the safes has $100 million. In front of the bank, the thief's van is currently parked and waiting for the driver to give the order to exit and begin the robbery. However, he does spot a well-dressed man on the sidewalk that is toting a heavy bag and sporting a pair of black sunglasses. The man pauses and gives the motorist a suspicious five-second stare before continuing to walk and going into the bank. The man, who turns out to be a reverend, tells the clerk that he wants to make a deposit in his safe. He informs him that the bank is closing and is asking all its customers to empty their safes. If they do not, the feds will take their things and contact them later. The reverend doesn't seem to want to deal with the feds and says he wants to pick up all the things now. Entering the room are Mrs. Waxman, an angry customer, and the bank manager, who tells the reverend to wait, pointing to Cynthia, the woman who had been waiting hours for her turn. The reverend walks over to Cynthia, takes off his sunglasses, and, after staring at her insistently, convinces her to give up her seat to him. Outside, the thieves don their skeleton masks to avoid being recognized, grab their weapons, and get out of the van. They break into the bank, but before they tie up the hostages, Cynthia hides a phone. The robbers count the hostages and realize that two people are missing from the room. The clerk takes the reverend to his safe, and the latter asks him to leave because his things are very personal, but he says regulations don't allow him to do so. Soon after, upstairs, he hears gunshots, and the clerk runs to see what is going on. The reverend, left alone, opens the safe that contains only jars of human eyes. The man is actually Bernard, aka Window, a notorious serial killer who deprives his victims of their eyes to give them to God because they represent the windows of the soul. Meanwhile, the clerk catches up with the thieves, and their boss Paul recognizes him because he is his brother Danny. Paul retracts his mask and apologizes to Danny. The other robbers remove their masks after he informs them that the bank turned off the surveillance cameras a week earlier. To free the final captive and open the safe containing the $100 million, one of them, Tracy, goes to the vault. The hostages are taken to another room by two other people, Ali and AJ, who watch over them. At the conclusion of the robbery, AJ learns that Ali and Tracy plan to kill every hostage, despite the fact that Paul had indicated that he did not want any victims. Danny begs Cynthia for her phone as the two exit the room and texts 911 in need of assistance. Danny is able to put the phone away covertly as AJ and Ali re-enter the space. Detective Pascal is tasked with going to the neighborhood bank to find out how things are doing as everyone else in town orders tacos from a street vendor. In the end, Tracy opens the safe, gathers all the money in a bag, and calls Paul. When she returns, she discovers the missing captive Bernard who had been hiding in an air vent after hearing a strange noise as she left the vault. Bernard proposes that because he has gathered all of his possessions, the woman should let him leave. But Tracy examines the man's bag out of curiosity. She freezes in agony at the sight of so many human eyes, and Bernard seizes the chance to attack her. Tracy tries to fight back, but Bernard cuts the arteries in her arm and says that she has only nine minutes to live. The driver of the van, Rick, who has remained outside to watch the road, notices Pascal's police car and another patrol car approaching the bank. He alerts Paul, who hides the masks and weapons. The detective and the two policemen knock on the door, and Paul opens it, pretending to be the bank manager, and informs them that they are closing and that there is no robbery in progress. The woman cannot enter without a warrant but does not believe Paul's story, so she takes his picture, sends it to the station, and then heads to Rick's van. The driver hides the drugs he is taking, but the detective sees him and orders him out of the van. In the vault, Tracy grabs the gun and shoots Bernard, but misses because he has now lost all strength. The detective hears the shots coming from the bank and becomes distracted. Panicked, Rick takes advantage of the situation to escape. Paul opens the door to let him in. Rick tries to grab the gun to ward off the cops, but the woman shoots him in the chest. As the two comrades fire on the cops, Paul brings Rick inside to treat him and warns the bald comrade Briggs that it is time for plan B, to operate the upstairs elevator and reach a secret exit. Meanwhile, Tracy bleeds to death, and Bernard cuts her eyes out and escapes. Briggs, coming down the stairs, meets AJ and Ali and warns them of Rick's situation, and the woman quickly realizes that it was Danny who called the police. After that, Briggs goes upstairs, pulls an axe out of his bag, and starts hitting the front wall to uncover the elevator. Paul goes down into the bank vault and finds Tracy's body on the table without eyes. He warns the others that it is the missing hostage who killed her and is now trying to escape through the air vents. Ali proposes that they find Bernard and kill him, but Paul reminds her that they do not have much time and must take the money and escape. 
In the hostage room, Mrs. Waxman has to do her business and convinces Allie to take her to the bathroom. Downstairs, her partner, Washington, asks Paul what happened between him and his brother. He explains that they were close and happy when they were young, but then their paths parted when they joined the army in different units. Meanwhile, Allie is waiting outside the bathroom for Mrs. Waxman but notices that she didn't come out. The woman opens the door and sees the lady dead, sitting on the toilet without eyes, the killer has also passed through the bathroom vent. Allie thinks the man is hiding in one of the toilets, but she cannot find him and decides to join AJ. On her way out, however, Bernard grabs her by the shoulders, throws her to the floor, and stabs her in the chest, killing her instantly. AJ talks to Danny, wondering what Allie is doing, and he hears noises coming from the air duct. Meanwhile, dozens of police cars surround the bank. Paul asks Briggs and AJ for updates, and AJ informs him that Allie has not returned from the bathroom and was probably killed. One of the police officers has connected to the radio frequencies the thieves used to talk on walkie-talkies and calls the detective to let her hear their dialogue. The woman, hearing the conversation between AJ and Paul, discovers that the thieves are locked up in the same facility as the serial killer she has been searching for years. Paul, desperate, comes out of the bank unarmed and asks the detective to discuss the situation peacefully. The woman agrees and asks him how many hostages and how many thieves there are in total. Paul ignores her questions and asks her to bring him a school bus and a doctor for Rick within two hours. Paul threatens to shoot the hostages if they do not comply. The detective acknowledges that he does not strike her as the kind of person who would kill someone, even though she knows he used to be a soldier. Paul says he served in the Corps, and the woman states that her husband was also a soldier but died in an explosion in Baghdad. The detective confesses to Paul that she does not understand why guys like him, after surviving a war, do not start a better life instead of turning to crime. The woman then accepts Paul's proposal, and he says that in return, he will hand over the hostages to her and her team. Detective Pascal orders two policemen to enter through the window behind the bank, and update her on the situation. Paul returns to the bank and orders Washington to join AJ on the upper floor and prepare the hostages. Washington convinces Danny to stabilize Rick, so that the doctor can arrive in time to treat him. Meanwhile, the detective and her boss are arguing about the simplicity of Paul's request, because they are afraid they will get screwed. Interrupting them is a large black van, from which a DOD team, called in by SWAT, emerges. The leader of the team is Sinclair, and he says he has been trying to catch Paul for years. Detective Pascal asks him what he is trying to steal if the bank is closing, and he informs her that there is $100 million in cartel money in the vault. One of Sinclair's men, Smith, is a doctor, and he enters the bank to treat Rick. Paul recognizes him and takes him upstairs as a hostage. He in return takes Cynthia and Rick, and turns them over to the cops. AJ ties Smith to the chair, and suggests that he stand still if he does not want to die. A few moments later, Bernard falls from the shaft of the room and approaches. Smith pleads with AJ to shoot him before it is too late, but he hesitates out of fear. Bernard says that all of them are sinners, and that after hearing God's voice, he realized he must collect the most souls. And he does this by taking out the eyes of his own victims. AJ loads his weapon and is about to shoot Bernard. Meanwhile, Sinclair sniper Chen is standing over the building in front of the bank and is aiming at AJ, thinking that Bernard is just another hostage. As soon as AJ is about to pull the trigger, a bullet goes through his head, leaving Bernard and Smith alone in the room. Sinclair and his partner Jones, along with the detective, burst into the bank. Everyone starts shooting, and one of the soldiers kills Washington. The shooting stops, and Sinclair asks Paul if he stole all the money. The detective does not understand what is going on and Paul tells her that Sinclair is also from the cartel. Meanwhile, Briggs, who has activated the elevator, hears the gunshots and heads toward Paul. In the next room, however, he encounters Smith's eyeless, dead body. The latter tries to warn Briggs to escape but does not have enough strength to make himself understood. Bernard appears behind Briggs and hits him with his axe. In the main room, the detective declares Sinclair under arrest, but he tells her not to meddle. From upstairs, the two policemen sent by the detective also arrive, but Jones kills them instantly. Paul takes advantage of his distraction to hit him and kill him. The manager sees a weapon near him and tries to grab it to save himself, but Sinclair kills him without hesitation. The detective threatens the soldier to shoot him if he does not drop the weapon, but he tries to convince her to split the money. She does not accept and is surprised from behind by Chen, who shoots her. The only ones left alive are Danny and Paul, and they know they cannot win against Chen and Sinclair. Paul surrenders, but Sinclair apologizes and kills him. They are about to kill Danny as well, but the detective, with her last remaining strength, kills Chen and shoots Sinclair. He survives, 
however, and escapes upstairs, encountering the dead and Isla Smith, AJ, and Briggs. Danny frees himself with scissors, then takes the detective's gun and goes after Sinclair to kill him. The latter escapes into the vault using the elevator. While looking for the exit, he runs into the killer, who beats him, knocks him to the ground, and stabs him. Sinclair tries to shoot him, but Bernard escapes in time, leaving him alone with a knife stuck in his shoulder. Danny also reaches the vault and is surprised by Bernard, who tackles him to the floor, but he grabs the knife and stabs the serial killer in the throat, killing him once and for all. Sinclair has found the exit and plans to escape safely, but Danny stops him from behind and, before Sinclair can react, shoots him right in the forehead. Danny is now happy, he has avenged his brother's death and stopped the serial killer from making more killings. But he does not know that the window killer has survived and is behind him, surprising him by stabbing him in the shoulder. Bernard throws him to the ground, kills him, and then plucks out his eyes and places them in one of his jars. The window killer, safe and sound, has now collected more souls and goes home with $100 million.